Good afternoon, uh, citizens of Uganda, and welcome to this uh, Citizens Chat Show program, which we hold here on Civic Space every week right here, and on different uh, topical issues along the week. And today, uh, I am delighted to be hosting you. My name is Monica Moding. I'm sitting in for Damian Masesa, who is unable to be here this afternoon, but I would like to welcome you and invite you to participate in this discussion. And we want to know what your say is our about on the issue that we are going to discuss here this afternoon. Today's topic is on the state, of course, the state of human rights and torture in Uganda, as the discussion is ravaging everywhere, on the media, wherever you go, it's about the state of torture in Uganda. And so I'd like to welcome you. And to help us put this discussion into perspective, we have a panel of experts, uh, very, very delightful guests and um, uh, experts on various matters on human rights and also working in the field in their various uh, spaces. I would like to uh, welcome you, but also to first of all welcome my panel here uh, before I invite um, you to participate in this discussion. Follow us on the channels that are running on your TV right now and participate in this conversation. The state of human rights and torture in Uganda, what is your say? Besides me here, uh, persons known to me in various ways, and I would like to introduce immediate after me is a, a senior comrade, comrade in uh, advocacy for social justice. I believe, yes. Uh, yes. And uh, I will not go to the other circles we have interacted. We were cautioned on using the word comrade because you may uh, use it differently. But uh, I know we are comrades also with uh, Major Awich in various ways. Major Awich is a senior cadre of NRM and uh, highly uh, respectable. Thank you, sir, for engaging all the time and yeah. being there even on hot matters like <laughs> this one. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you so much. How has your week been? Uh, it, week has been tired. Um, we've been discussing this topic in various other fora. Yeah. But thank you so much for, being, for making me be here. But you have emphasized various aspects. I hope it is not overstretched. <laughs> no. The other, various, <laughs> the other various aspects, I would plead guilty with the, the Guarantari, but... Uh, here we are. Comradeship. <laughs> yes, it has to be defined. <laughs> it has to be defined. He's mm. mindful of Valentine. Ah! Yeah. Okay, it's mm. just uh, one or two days away. Mm. Okay. And then guys are always very generous. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Release, man. Next to uh, Afande, which is our, of course, our superwoman here. Mm. I call her combatant mm. in the issues of social justice, governance, good governance in Uganda, Sarah Virete. She is our resident panelist here, uh, which now is our resident panelist, I believe. You're welcome, Sarah. How has been your week as well? Thank you, Monica. It has been a week of uh, witnessing gruesome clips and pictures of yeah. torture. Mm -hmm. uh, our screens are littered with torture on phones, on TVs. Our minds are littered with torture. It's a state of torture. It is a state of torture. Yeah. And that's the conversation we'd like to have sure. this afternoon. Yes. Uh, so is it torture? a state of torture? Is no. it not? I think no. it is a, we uh, shall get that it's a question to be answered <laughs> in the discussion. <laughs> Next to Sarah is uh, Aboneka. I heard you speaking Luganda so, so clearly. And for a reason, I thought you really are not from the central region. That is not important for this mm. discussion, but yeah. how have you been? <laughs> Uh, so I've been saying it's a, it's a week of torture, uh, the state of torture, but then I would say maybe it is the torture of the state. <laughs> we'll get there. For this but, week. For this week. But, but also, this, this week, all our hearts have been on leave. Mm. Because for you to survive, you needed to put your heart somewhere on mm. leave and mm. say we'll come back when the things are, are done. But also... Yeah. It's been a week of responsibility of people waking up mm. and saying, no, this cannot happen. Yeah. And uh, some taking responsibilities, others struggling to explain. But I think this week is going down to the books of history. Mm. And that history always 
uh, time will always give us the verdict. Yes. Well, I found it quite interesting because the state was on the spot, really. And uh, I'm glad uh, a senior a witch doesn't really fear these uh, fires. And I think it's say. very difficult to Let's talk right now. Yeah, yeah, but we really appreciate him for, for mm. giving us time. Mm. Of course, Joe, this whole team is not new to you, our viewer, uh, Joe, or Joseph mm. Oteno, who is the presidential aspirant for the UPC party. Mm. You're very welcome, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't know how your week has been. The, the uh, okay. He will tell us more about that. He always does because he's yeah. always on the spot concerning yeah. that. But you're welcome. Uh, Jill. Thank you very much, mm. Monique. Uh, I'm really, really delighted uh, to be here. And this week is actually a big excitement. Mm. It's a big excitement. Please don't tell Damien. But I feel absolutely fabulous that you are hosting this show. Wow. But also possibly doing that because... Um, in a week in which you're discussing human rights uh, and, the, and the rule of law, mm. <coughs> I think it's actually also appropriate that um, the gender that is most marginalized uh, leads on this, and so hence you and, 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 and my beautiful Sarah, sister Sarah here. But that said too, I look back to the last day of the week with, with, with a bit of heavy heart. Mm. I get very exhausted. I was telling a young citizen, I think around Wednesday, those one group that came to, to see me, uh, incidentally and coincidentally discussing Luero with them, and they found it very interesting, the perspective that I gave them. But beyond that, we even went back to the 60s debates leading to independence and all around conflicts. So um, the details will come, mm, mm. but I think this week has been uh, manifested, partly as my colleagues say, you sort of don't want to read be beyond the headlines, and the many of these pictures I saw and have not uh, I've opted not mm, to, to look mm. at them. Of course, uh, uh, my panel here is very, very able to de dissect this topic. But uh, in terms of just a review of the week, mm. I think um, just to put back to a flashback on what has happened, gentlemen and lady, during this week, of course, we got so many very traumatizing pictures. Mm about uh, citizens of Uganda who have been tortured variously in many, many different mm. places. The head of state responded and, and noted that um, he, uh, any, any person, any state agent or security agent using force to extract information from sus suspects is doing it in error and so will be personally liable in terms of uh, punishment. And also, I think along the week, there has been a discussion in parliament. The leader of opposition was in the house and walked out with his team in protest uh, mm. against uh, the torture and uh, the, the failure of government to release its people, purported uh, mm. supporters of uh, no and all, you know, the opposition in parliament. And then, of course, we saw the public has responded variously in uh, this discussion. If you go to the media channels, wherever, the newspapers, everywhere, the discussion has been uh, quite heated. And, uh, of course, the international community, namely, I think the UK government, the USA government, has also come out to speak and condemn the, person, the persons or uh, security agents for... For, for the persons, we may not specifically at this moment. It's not clear whether it is security agents or, or a it robot. Is, yeah, so individuals involved in torture of the other person. So that's the discussion we want to to just flash back and, and you know reflect and engage the public on. But this time, I don't know. Uh, it's it's easier usually to sit here, mm. but not on your side. So today, <laughs> for me, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> but yourselves are, mm. are on the spot in this conversation. And I don't know where to begin from. Maybe I'll I probably to. would like to start from Sarah or Mike Aboneka, so mm. that mm. then uh, our senior mm. government person here will have an opportunity mm. to respond mm. to mm. some of the issues. So... I probably want to put the question to Michael Aboneka in terms of your reflections of the week. Yes. What would be your say at this point? Because basically it is, that communication is coming mm. from the heart, I believe, for mm. every person, mm. for every mm. Ugandan. Mm. What would be your say in these matters? You know, Valentine will be on Monday. Mm. And I think it's time we have heart-to-heart -heart conversations mm. Mm. as mm. Ugandans on these issues. Mm. And now, once you, you overthrow 
the freedom of expression, which extends to right to dissent, then you'll kill the heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Mm, 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 because mm. once there is no heart-to-heart -heart conversations, yeah. then we will not heal as a country. So for me, the first thing is that the responsibility of the state is to make wealth for its citizens mm -hmm. and protect the citizens and their wealth. Mm, mm. Now, the things that have happened, torture and, and what have you, they are pointing to many things. And, and this week I've written uh, a very long article and I'm, I'm actually asking that government needs to account. It's, a, an, it's an issue of accountability. Mm. That, and I'm looking at this broadly. I have asked, even in my article, that let anyone ever show me someone who has been arrested in the proper conduct of Article 23.2, clause 2 to 9. Mm. You come and say, I am Afande Sara, mm -hmm. I am coming from CPS, are you Mike Aboneka? Mm. I am, I'm here to collect you, being arrested or discharged, mm. and you have a right to remain silent, you have a right to your lawyer, mm. let's go to the CPS. Mm. Let even the IGP show me that clip. Mm. Okay. Then I will know that we are talking about a same country after 36 years. Mm. Why is it difficult? Why is it difficult mm. for a country that, 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 that practices, okay, allegedly <coughs> practices democracy, to just even, just implement one article, Article 4, which says the constitution must be translated, mm -hmm. Taught, mm. disseminated, mm. they have never done it. Mm. The ICT ministry is asking for over 200 billion shillings for mindset. Mm. Change. For, for us to love our what? country. From what to what? I don't even know. Mm. The Law Reform Commission is asking for only 300 million shillings to translate to the constitution of Uganda so that <laughs> everyone knows they are right. Mm. So I'm just trying to paint that picture that this is not coming from just out of the blue. The, the man of arrest mm. and Article 23. What happened to it? It's about human rights. Now, you disrespect a court order of unconditional release mm. Mm. and a habeas corpus. Mm. I have, as a judicial officer, I have said, bring the body of Kakwenza, the body of Michael to me. It is not your, you to say that it is in Luzira. No. I would love to see a country where the attorney general is brought to court for court, court of the contempt court of, of court. court yeah. I asked you to bring the body to me. Why have you? You are saying it, mm. it. Can't you see he is in Luzira? No. Mm, mm, mm. The order is saying bring him to me. That is what human rights is about. Mm. That court is respected. So the issue about torture is that Uganda is a signatory to International Civil and Political Rights Convention, and then the UN Convention Against Torture. Now there is an optional protocol that allows countries to open up their detention centers for inspection. Uganda has not signed it. Mm. And the question is, why, why hasn't Uganda signed it? Okay. If you're a democratic country and you're saying, we love you, we are securing your future mm. by battering you, you know. So why is it that Uganda has not signed the optional protocol, to the, that UN Convention on Torture? And that proto optional protocol is about countries and states allowing the visiting and inspection of detention centers. Mm. President Museven should do his job as the president. Article 98 is the chief executive of this country. He's the fountain of honor. Can we say, can all citizens say, can we see all the detention centers we have? As, because they're supposed to be lawful. Mm. Do we know where people are? Mm -hmm. The people were arrested in Kalangala. Why must you be arrested and thrown under the truck mm -hmm. where they throw dead bodies, even the dogs that have died? That is inhuman and mm -hmm. degrading. Why must you throw a canister in someone's bedroom uh, in, a, in a university hall and the man loses his, his fingers. fingers? Then you go to apologize. Mm -hmm. I have not seen the CDF. I've not seen the ACDF. I don't know where he is, but I hope he's fine. I've not seen him come out to talk about these issues. I've not seen the IGP to come out mm -hmm. and say, no, it is not us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is those other guys. Mm -hmm. Like, where is the CDF? Where is the IGP? Where is the president? That's what I'm writing about saying we need an accountable government. Mm. Now, as I summarize, is that 
We didn't vote government to be tortured. We don't vote government to be tortured. Whether it will be Mr. Ocheno's government, I'll be here. Whether it will be Sarah's government, or General Witch, or General, General, Witch General Witch. We can only participate in affairs of state when we are alive. Mm. When you make people, when you kill people, you are mm -hmm. actually you are actually delegitimizing your power. Mm. So we vote government for two things: for adequate services. We, we we give them power through a vote, and we expect adequate services. Now, the people who are torturing, they are using fuel that is sponsored by the citizens of Uganda. The bush and beans those police guys eat before they beat us. The uniform they use. So I think that let's have a heart to heart conversation. Let the CDF come out and mm. apologize mm. at least. Mm. Let mm. The, the commander in chief come and apologize. Mm. And then after that, let us see the lineup of all the people mm. that were involved mm. in torture. Not only just for Kakwenza, but the people who were arrested others. in Kalangala, mm. the people who have been picked in, in Arua, mm. people who were picked in Vujiri by election, by the way. People have been uh, have, have, have lost, have been lost. We don't know where they are. So an accountable government mm. knows where its citizens are, who they are, who they are, how they are doing, mm -hmm. and respects their views. Okay. Yes. All right, Michael. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. What Michael is putting across is that Uganda, of course, has ratified, as it has been said, the international instruments. We have the laws in place, but what is not happening is the enforcement of those laws. People continue to, you know, uh, be tortured. Uh, disappearances are enforced by certain agencies, uh, of course, in the in the country. And in the midst of this chaos, uh, there is silence from relevant uh, offices, uh, the responsible senior ranking officers, CDF, and the rest upwards, and all the others. So. Uh, what, 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 what is your saying? And he's emphasizing the need for government to be accountable. Account on the citizens, the numbers of people who have faced this, and also, you know, be responsive generally to what is happening. I don't know, is there something that you want to add before we bring in a, a, a general on this conversation? What is your say on that, on the issues mm. generally? Reflections in the week and what he has observed. Dear citizens, it's it's a very painful. It is quite emotional conversation all yeah. the time. Yeah. Mm. Painful topic. Mm. When you read the uh, the last paragraph in Animal Farm, which creates a lasting impression. You know, George Orwell said the creatures looked from man to pig. No, from pig to man, man to pig, mm. and pig to man again. And they could not see, see the difference. difference. Mm. NRM went to the bush to fight an elected government on three allegations. I'll call them allegations because I was too young to know whether they were right or wrong. Mm. A rigged direction, a mismanaged economy, and gross violations of human rights. So if you are part of the animals, now in animal farm, mm. and you are looking from pig to man, and, and you man can't find the pig, difference. Mm. And pig to man, you find a bigger monster on all the three accounts. Mm. A rig direction, Supreme Court has been on record for saying they are irregularities. They hide behind the substantiality to, to another elections mm. on three accounts. All the irregularities they agree, but hide behind the substantiality clause. If you look at the economy, I'm starting with the softer bees. Mm. Mm. If you look at the economy, it's in shambles. After two death cancellations, mm. We are still we are above the borrowing rates. We are rates. above the, the, the we are above the, the mm. borrowing rates. Mm. The third time, and we have a new so uh, uh, um, President Museveni's mm. leadership has benefited from international debt cancellations twice under his leadership, mm. and he has driven the country third time into skyrocketing debt. And where is the money going? Mm. All public figures 
are running away from our pathetic hospitals mm. Mm. And, to be treated uh, and just in a week of tears of torture mm. you have a governor a highly celebrated economist dying in exile because we have no hospitals mm. to, to, to treat him you have a minister unfortunately for him it was due to covid so that one we might i'm, I'm sure father rokodo may he was on this. official duty i'm yeah. sure he could have gone to morago mm. because he was a humble person mm. we have a speaker we have to fly a charter all the way to america because we have killed all our hospitals <laughs> but the likes of dr bote would go to morago for treatment So but the topic of the day mm. gross violations of human rights and the other clips of president on seven as a rebel leader mm. yeah mm. rebel leader mm. you torture people you it's unacceptable even when he had the, the first years he said how can you be a dpc and people are missing <laughs> oh mad that and you don't know and, and you, you cannot explain know. it You cannot be a DPC under my leadership. Mm. Where did that Museven go? What is the type of Museven that we have today? He has no relations whatsoever mm. with the original Museven. Instead what we are witnessing under him, unfortunately, and I don't know whether you know people during the times of Saddam mm -hmm. used to say that Saddam had the duplicates. Mm. Oh. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you say a, a duplicate of Saddam would pass and over to people in a oh. captured area. Then you say, hey, our man is still oh, strong. He's still strong. Let's so when he on. was in the whole hiding until he was <laughs> discovered. Mm. Mm. So maybe <laughs> I hope we are not dealing with a duplicate because of the contradictions. Mm. Mm. We have a situation of gross violations mm. of human rights. Mm. It has been confirmed in the two international processes of universal periodic review by the UN Human Rights Council of Human for Human Rights and recommendations given yeah. to Uganda and ignored. Mm. We have just undergone our second periodic review. And we had almost say a recommendation so in the last year. Recommendations that were never implemented yeah. in over the last six years. Mm. You have killings Oh, executions because i think what happened in Kampala in november those were executions mm, mm. It's for the judicial killings. killings you have uh, extrajudicial killings in kasese mm. where people were captured with pangas and spears mm. in the palace mm. you have uh, i mean really you have beating of journalists in the course of their work mm. you have corrosion vengeos mm. you have uh, torture gruesome torture on individuals on individuals mm. for holding unfortunately divergent views mm. Mm. merely we mm. have people who lost their lives for wearing a cape mm. red cape <laughs> <laughs> very unfortunate mm. because you are intentionally exterminating people mm. of a particular political grouping mm. these are crimes under humanity classified mm. under ICC mm. 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 The Rome Statute yeah. that establishes the International Criminal Court, mm. and all this is presided over by a president who is also a commanding chief mm. and a fountain of honor. Mm -hmm. Ugandans need to understand that in, in some other countries, mm. a president might not necessarily be a commanding chief. Mm. Is that so? Yes. Can you s depending on the jurisdiction? Mm. But our president is a commanding chief and in many it's the common and the presidential system it's the mm. common mm. Mm. practice yes mm. and the presidential system you have a president who is a commanding chief and fountain of honor mm. so you you represent you are an embodiment of everything beautiful in your country mm. good oh, yes. noble fountain of yeah. honor mm. on top of that you are a commanding chief meaning that you are directly responsible What? for the conduct of the security agencies mm. Mm. and third you are the chief executive of a country mm -hmm. you are a president mm. recently we saw a president coming up and putting himself in the dock with the letters on this date 
I wrote to to so and so stop torture and you know several letters mm-hmm. and giving a reference. I just remembered the Bible. You know the letters Paul was writing to Galatians, Corinthians, Corinthians. Mm. No, but so, there were. I, I think those and, letters. And even for him, he was even in prison. I'm sure he would have done better. Of course, even <laughs> as <not>. in Macedonia. <laughs> so that was that has put him in such a situation of writing to the forces that he directed the commands, mm. and he seems to be on a begging knee. Please mm. stop beating mm. people. Mm. Please I'm don't begging. hold the beyond. Please, is a president supposed to be a, a lamenting, or is supposed to act? But maybe there is something that we don't know. Maybe our president is in uh, some host, you know, he's a hostage of some things, That's what you know. I, I don't That's know don't if know. Uh, maybe yeah. there is something that we Ugandans have not yet understood. Well, as a citizen. And we need to reach out. As a citizen, mm. I expect to have a president who is a fountain of honor, mm. an embodiment of honor, of, of, of respect, mm. of everything beautiful. Mm-hmm that the people of Uganda represent. Mm. I expect the president to be in charge, commander. Even when you are a, a small contingent commander, mm. you must exert authority. Mm. Mm. So you are not an apostle like a Paul. You are not a beggar. Or you are not a letter writer to lament. And Somebody say, could still say that the systems are working and that he has allowed the relevant systems and the, the persons to do that work. We've seen the Minister of National Guidance communicating on behalf of government. We've seen the Attorney General on the floor. We've seen the uh, who else has spoken out. Many uh, state uh, uh, dignitaries and offices of, of honor. And given the age of our president, I would assume that maybe, yes, we are fully having a, a, an operational government. That is still a contradiction yes. from what Sarah is saying. Mm. Because what Sarah is saying... We are all leaders mm. in our small spaces. Mm. Sometimes you allow systems to work. Mm-hmm. If they, you are like and they work well, you sit back mm. and take a deep breath. That's what everybody wishes to see. If there are small mistakes, you must correct them as they happen. Correct, correct. Even with child bringing, mm. upbringing. I won't say that I'm a good parent, please go. Then the neighbors come crying, your child has done this. You say, I am talking. My child has done this. I am going to write a letter. Your <laughs> child has done this. Are you, can you confide them to be called a parent? So it, it, systems work, but they must be supervised. If at all they are working, they must be supervised. They must be checks. Even in our, in our constitution, we have checks and balances. Mm, mm. So you cannot... Really, me, I was disappointed. As much as it looked like a change of heart, because the previous scripts we had on human rights, was where a president, when addressing a nation, said, I heard <laughs> that the people were saying an MP was beaten. Then I said, let me see. Yeah, beat, beat him then I watched the video, and then I saw you. the man actually was beaten <laughs> properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, please, as a president, you have a job to do, mm. and you've got to do that job, or if somebody has to do it. Monica, before you go, just oh, well, a minute. I, I wanted to just bring in, okay. Just a, a mm. quick one. Sarah says, they are talking, you actually said they are talking, the Eastern media said they are talking, yes. So the systems are doing more of the talking than mm. the working. Mm. 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 The Honorable Minister for Justice said that, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, it is not us who are torturing them, but then who? In whose detention centers are, are they going? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to elaborate that mm. they are busy talking. Mm-hmm. That, that talking mm-hmm. is not work. They are seeming to be like they are working. Yeah. What we want are systems that work and not systems that just talk. Producing, uh, Actually, what the minister said yes. is that produce evidence, details mm. of names of people who are, who are being tortured and give them to us because we don't have that. Can and the, then can they can do the also allow us to go and visit the detention centers, all of them in this country? Well, uh, I, I respect this man that sit, sit, is sitting next to me very, very greatly for the resilience that he has even in such conversations. But thank you so much for standing because every time we invite someone from government to be in this space, rarely do we get them, but you have stood uh, the test of time, and we greatly appreciate you 
for that. I, you've listened to Michael, you've listened to Sarah. Of course, this topic usually is quite a, a motive in, in most of the conversations that we have because it touches on mm. the rights of individuals. Torture is non-derogable, really. A, a right that is non-derogable in the Constitution. And if you find activists like us talking about it, I think these people have been kind, actually, in their communication. But uh, in other spaces where I've watched these same people talking, I think it was hotter uh, than here. So you are safe, uh, Afande Awich. We just want to hear your comment. And uh, I know you're holding a position in the National Resistance Party. By so doing, you also represent government in a way. And so we hold your views as very, very important and representative of the position of the government. Uh, what is your take on these matters? Uh, <coughs> thank you so much, Oram Monica. Mm. Uh, I thank all my colleagues for their submissions. We are discussing a very, very important matter. Mm. It's torture. Mm. Uh, torture, I should say straight away, that is non-partition. All of us should not think it is either the NRM should support mm. it and then our government should support it or the opposition are the only ones against torture, no. Uh, it's for all and it is non-partition, no color. Uh, I also note that you say my colleagues have been quite friendly in the, this than other for us. I think it's basically because they know the person they are interfacing with. Mm -hmm. fair if you, no, that's fair <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, you are interfacing with a government agent or a cadre that you definitely know his nature to be either confrontational or you suspect is going to be <laughs> telling falsehood, definitely also impact on the position on how people interact relate with you. Oh. Uh, the other thing is that uh, why I hold the view or I package the way I do is because one, I'm not telling lies, I believe in truth, mm -hmm. and two is that I think I've been failing long in NRM to have known the original where the pitfalls can the be. Principles. Yeah, okay. I'm not so new, so I've been old in the system, so I know the original feelings and maybe possibly where there's a deviation. So this makes me present a view that I think is coherent. Now, I, w I would like to say straight away that uh, torture is bad, it's not accepted by NRM party and NRM government. And as you said, I, I'm talking on behalf of government because uh, when we as a party go during a campaign, mm -hmm. we have a manifesto we sell to the people. When we manif market this manifesto to the mm -hmm. people, the people vote the party. Then the party form government. So uh, government is simply an executive wing serving the manifesto of the party. And the party has manifestos in all areas, including governance. Mm -hmm. This torture that we are talking about under the party manifesto is about under governance mm -hmm. and therefore with human rights. So uh, if uh, it, it fails and after five years we go back to the people, we are not going to tell the voters that, okay, the other violations was government, but you vote for us NRM. <laughs> it was your party that was voted, that formed the government. So are you so, owning um, up? Yes, it is government. Okay. It is party and government. That's right. Right. Thank you. Yes. Mm. So it's our party. We, that's why they so say we're a ruling party. People. That's why yeah. it is a ruling yeah. party. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I like to say that even in the, 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 the UN system, mm. where there's periodic review, the assessment on government performance mm. is not on a one-off activity. Mm. So government should be seen to have put measures in place. Across. Okay. Across, but... uh, so <laughs> what happens now, the incident or the actions of torture should just be a challenge to us as a government. Have we put measures in place? But normally, uh, even if you put measures in place, you put a beautiful measure, but when you put it to practice, you see cracks. That's why all along there are provisions for amending the law. Mm. So I like to say that government has put measures in place for a long time. And this should show to get the commitment that government has. Because you cannot put in measures if you don't have the commitment. Mm. For the beginner, Article 44 of the Constitution was put in place. Mm. This Constitution was passed by Museven on the 9th of October in Fort Fortan, 1995. So we knew what it was launching as a new constitution. So 
if he didn't want Article 44, he would have not put it. And that Article 44, as we know, is rights that you can't deviate from. We, and incidentally, it excludes right to life. Because right to life, you can be sent, taken to court, sentenced to, and hanged. Mm. So the court has power to take right to life. Mm. Even in this four, there's no right to food. The four rights are nobody can make anybody a, pre a slave. Mm. Even Museveni cannot say, oh, Keller is his slave. Mm. Right to labor as corpus. When the body is not there, can go for, to court and say, bring it here. Fair hearing. Matters of administrative judicial affecting somebody, please hear him. Then the last one is freedom from torture. Mm. In the past, the courts of law, if a court, if Okello was convicted for ch stealing chicken, the court can enter into an order that give him a cane of 20 strokes, and it would be administered before court. Now, not even Supreme Court can order for the caning of Okello. So the fact that government put this in place shows commitment. It went to Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission is a body to receive complaints and also to educate people. A member was talking about the uh, inability or failure of government to educate people in human rights. It's one of the mandates of Human Rights Commission. It's fully fledged. There's a torture act. The torture act was passed, but you know that you have been a member of parliament by, by, and, by and large. Even if uh, a private member's motion can come up, but legislations are predominantly the duty of state because it has even to do financial implication before a law it comes up. So now <laughs> the, 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 the government came up with Anti-Torture Act. The most important thing in Anti-Torture Act is that if a police officer or an investigating officer goes to arrest somebody and he tortures or breaks a leg, in the past if you sue such an officer, he would plead the defense of attorney general that I'm working on behalf of Attorney General, <laughs> it is true I broke, the, I broke the leg, sue Attorney General. Under the law now, the law is saying, hold him liable. Mm -hmm. So if you touch equally, hold him liable. Mm. Now, why did government come up with this provision? It's because it was envisaged 10 mm. years ago that in the process of actions, there would be this kind of officers. And this now brings me to the point that the incident that we are seeing is not a government philosophical position <laughs> is not a government policy position. It is actors within the state. Mm -hmm. Either because of their incompetency to investigate mm. or the overzeal that they have in their work mm. or otherwise they are the ones doing these actions. Mm. And therefore, these actions should be treated as actions of individuals within the state and the law provides for that. If it was an envisage 10 years back it wouldn't, that law would not have been put. The law was put 10 years back because it envisaged that, ladies and gentlemen, in the process of working, we are going to get officers who are overzealous with investigation. Mm -hmm. We're going to get officers of com incompetence because the investigations that is done, no state machinery, which is legitimate, CID, internal security organization, mil military intelligence of the army, or even external of which all investigation done are primarily for the consumption of court. Mm -hmm. For example, if you accuse Masereka of conniving with ADF, mm -hmm. that is treason. So any investigation that you do on Masereka should be to collect the information to take for court consumption. But I find now, you so Masereka with yes, the torture. Yes, that's what I'm coming mm -hmm. to, that if you go and mishandle the investigation of Masereka mm -hmm. by doing torture, then the law is saying personally be liable for that because you have the zeal that Masareka is connect, conniving with the ADF in law that is treason. But it doesn't amount, it doesn't warrant torture. That's what I'm saying. In fact, put it crudely, even if somebody killed 10 people now in broad daylight and you're arresting you don't, you don't torture have to him. Torture the person who has killed ten people. Mm -hmm. I just so want to give you a rejoinder to that. Mm. So now, who is answerable for those mm -hmm. crimes? Mm -hmm. Because it seems there is no responsible institution now, this that you can to, point to. This brings me to 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 to, 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 to remedies to that. The mm. remedy to that could be twofold. One, the law provides a pursuit on the individual, so mm. the victims can lay a civil claim, okay? Mm -hmm. A civil claim. Mm -hmm. And it is on record that Human Rights Commission Court has made billions of awards in that kind of situation. Even a, a civil court, high court, they have made billions of awards 
in mm. areas of such violations. Two, it could even the victim could launch a criminal claim. Personal, I would doubt it now because if you are the same person who is released from Kireka police, it is always challenging again to go to another counter as CPS to report it. So leaving, therefore, a civil claim as an objective. But I'm saying we need to look under the law. Or well, if there is a lacuna in the law, government should now have a motion of its own. Mm -hmm. A matter that has come as a public interest like this, government should move on a motion of its own to investigate it. Mm -hmm. In the event that the victim cannot raise a civil claim, mm -hmm. in the event that the <coughs> victim cannot raise a criminal claim, mm. therefore, we should need to look under the provision of the law. I have not seen it. If it is not under the substantive law, it could be provided under the regulations. Because regulations are instruments that operationalize an act. Mm. We could provide it under this, that where there's a matter of public concern of human torture, the state should not leave it on the victim to bring complaint. Mm. It should be the state to move on a motion of its own to investigate. And I should think, in this particular case, measures are already in place. I don't think the government that I know will sleep over this. So, in all, government does not condone torture. It is not a government position. It is not a party. It is not a party position. And it is not a government that the party has formed that does it. It must be condemned in its entirety. Thank you very much, Afande Awich. Uh, certainly, you've restated the same positions that we've had government uh, spokespersons, agents, talk about the last four days <coughs> and you are summarizing uh, at least what we appreciate from your message is the the regret mm. but that seems not to be coming out uh, uh greatly uh to say that this has gone wrong <coughs> and we acknowledge that this is not right torture is not right we've not had that come out from anyone but the same position has been restated yet we are seeing a lot of unrest and in the public so the question that is still in my head, who is my, not my doing... It paragraph yes. that it should be condemned and nobody condones it. I hope it will. And I hope that the measures you, you ended up with are being put in place. The government coming up with its own motion, doing several other things. So I still want to ask you, what is not going right in terms of the other institutions? But I'll put that question to, to Joe to help us <coughs> put it into perspective. You've heard from uh, somebody that speaks for government. And I know that uh, there are several institutions that are involved. What is not being done? What is being done and what is not being done in the circumstances that we have? Of course, government has its role to play. Parliament has its role to play. The judiciary has its role to play. And uh, funders uh, ably raised some of the issues that uh, are, are sticky there. But uh, we still see a lot of things <coughs> not going on well. And uh, I, I wanted to just hear a comment from that. Mm -hmm. What is not going well? Who is not doing what they should be doing mm -hmm. in terms of those bodies, the professional bodies, law society? Have we had them make a comment in any way? Yes. Yeah, they just and and many yeah. others, the religious bodies, you know. You know and um, other you know, mm -hmm. institutions, the academia, what's happening? Is this a matter of only the activists out there in civic space to, to discuss? I'm actually slightly worried by the seemingly very well presented conclusion of uh, my comrade Awich. Mm. Uh, and in part because I was interjecting earlier uh, when you're raising the presenter's um, um, devil's advocate uh, question to Sarah. Mm. And I was suggesting that actually the contradiction there was that it would appear under which sort of seems to present that you can't say that the institutions are working mm. and the commander in chief, Comrade Musemuru from the bush, is the one in charge who should actually be instructing, mm. but that the dilemma is that his instructions are not being taken. So if the systems are working and in place and uh, they should be responsive, you know, um, the old Museveni, even however tired he may be, even if he may not want to accept that he's tired, mm. you know, should not be having an issue. Possibly simply tell him to do because it's come from state house and it's done. But um, that said, I just want to go back. You notice, as I was saying, that I've, I've, I've today put on ordinary dressing like from Macedonia St. Paul, very deliberately and, and a, a khaki trouser, um, in part to be in mourning in part really to emphasize modesty of the week, but in part also to say that um, I was a victim 
of unlawful arrest as a student at Makere University, mm -hmm. detained without trial, tortured, narrowly escaped to exile in 1987. 87. Uh, all the guys who are possibly managing our cameras in the bathroom may not have been born yet. It's shocking that um, today in 2022, um, we would be witnessing what we are discussing today mm. uh, in, in the face of a young person as Kankwenza. And you're quite right that uh, I wish that uh, the Museven was articulating these things, although I generally believe that the same Museven of 1986 is the same one. Museven is first public address. I don't know whether it's possible the first one beyond, beyond, be, uh, uh, away from Parliament was at the Faculty of Law, I think two days after, after he, he stormed into power by force at Makero, and I was there. And again, I don't believe that the Museveni of January 1986 should be the one supervising the torture and, 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 uh, and abductions and the incompetence in his own security services as mm, we're facing today. Mm, mm. But then the last other thing I want to say is that it's interesting, which I was at a funeral um, in, in Tororo, just early part of this week. And a very senior member of NRA um, said that um, thieves, uh, these ordinary thieves in, uh, in, in, in rural Uganda, mm. if caught, citizens should basically just deal with it, you know, basically torture them to death. Mm. And um, I was humble enough not to get the opportunity to get the mic and respond. That that is not what applies in a country where there's a rule of law. Mm. And that all that was required was, and it was actually even taunting the religious leaders who mm. were there. For not uh, doing much. Yeah. Well, the religious leaders, meaning that uh, I don't care their opinion, you know, let's just do it like, uh, you know, like we do it in the bush. He said it in public. Oh, no, he said he it. He his name. Um, he didn't say it. And for these purposes, I want to hold it because I want to come back to it. Because I want to call him and tell him that it was completely unacceptable. No, it was, it was actually, actually, somebody who works with you. It's a very senior person and a very public. It was terrible. In public? In public. It is not a um, secret congressman you <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> Why do you hide a public thing? No, it was uh, your man Tango Doi. It's already Doi, in and, the uh, public No, no, no. So, yeah, but it's, yeah. So, 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 so it's a very unfortunate thing. Um, Tango Doi said it and I, I still wanted to call him and uh, tell him it was unacceptable, particularly because I didn't have the opportunity to respond. I thought it was rather scary because Tango should have been saying that the police in Agonga should be equipped, mm. the intelligence services mm. should be equipped, mm. there should be facilities for our young people to go into schools, yeah. there should be facilities in the sporting arenas for these guys to engage in the evening rather than looking for the next chicken, and, and that um, underlying issues of poverty, including the factory in Agonga, the two factories in Agonga, should be equipped rather than now serving as a police post for which they have no chairs to sit on. So this is within the context of the reality of what we're facing today. Um, I don't know how... Uh, uh, Comrade which is seeming to suggest that uh, um, by the re-institution re of uh, Museveni's constitution of 1995 and the provisions that, uh, um, if you like, ob you know, oblige individuals who are perpetrators of this, this crime should take responsibility. And I know this is the second time you're referring to it in the same program, that uh, if some police officer uh, commits um, um, tortures an individual, they take responsibility. But I wonder whether we are saying that the OC, the officer in charge, and, uh, um, will say that, well, the officer's concerned, the, the officer involved is not me, and it's not the station, so deal with this. I'm not quite sure whether that's what you're saying. And if that's what you're saying, it's even much worse. That I think uh, um, my brother, uh, uh, Mike, was uh, as referring much earlier, that some of these things actually do happen, and then you don't know whether it's a, with Okoto Chola in the police, or oh, indeed with the Museveni's military commander who is mm. holding these people as in... in, in. So, so basically but what I was saying... But with the police, mm. apart from the IGP, yeah. all the other top leadership... Um, are soldiers. Military men. Soldiers, soldiers, yes. Soldiers. Mm. So is this, was this you done 10 years ago by design, you Comrade Rich? You know, that citizens should do be... Do we know what the military men yeah. are telling So them. how do we... Yeah. So these guys come in unmarked vehicles down here, yes. pick up individuals at whatever, take them to whatever, unknown, take them to unknown centers. The police say we are not, we are, we are, we are not in no, charge, we, we are not aware, we don't know what's happening. The military guys possibly say the same thing. Museven is in charge in State House. We pay all these funny guys, we pay them, by the way. You know? And even promote you know? them. And promote them. And, and even when they're known, you know, at the end of the day, we simply say, no, our government was not responsible. And some dubious guy, like perhaps poor Kankwenza's cousin or uncle, now should go ahead and hold these guys to account, or perhaps go and sue them, you know? 
That, that's extraordinary. It's absolutely wrong. Um, I, I, I am saying this. Museveni of the past is the same Museveni today. This what very, has changed? Nothing, nothing has changed about Museveni. He's getting much more desperate. Uh, uh, Museveni told, I think, the BBC, when he was challenged about the atrocities in Loero, and he said he does not know conventions about human rights. He never read the Geneva Conventions. I've said that several times and deliberately. And I'm saying it because people think that Museveni has changed. Museveni has actually gone to the worst extremes, and things have also caught up with him. You know? um, so I am simply saying that um, we can't go back and correct a bit of Luero of Museveni versus Oboti or Enari, you know, these funny guys versus UNLA. No, we're simply saying that, well, the state of Uganda in which we are today, UNLA, NRA, or whoever else concerned, we really, really simply say that, well, in 2020, we should not be seeing the pictures that we saw. In 2020, young people who are actually thinkers like uh, Kankwens should not go through what they've actually gone through. Mm -hmm. And Museveni should not come and make statements at State House. After 36 years, you know, a guy was not even elected into State House. By the way, we just tolerant Ugandan citizens. And now he wants to use scare and torture. Maybe torture Kankwens, and next time somebody says whatever he's got to say, then they've got to think again before they say it, whatever it is. I, I think it's actually wrong. You, you're a fine citizen and soldier of uh, Enery. You guys could make better guys uh, as, as better leaders going forward. Maybe it's time for you guys to begin to review that. Uh, let Museveni retire. Mm -hmm. Let some younger citizens, you know, come and engage with UPC and others. Mm -hmm. So that maybe there's a Uganda beyond uh, Uganda of 2020 in which we experience what we just experienced this week. Of course, gentlemen and, uh, gentlemen and mm -hmm. ladies, there's a lot we have not touched on mm -hmm. in this conversation. We would like to go to a quick break and then return. But I it's think more if you have just quick in mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. minutes and then we uh, come back y to Yes, a, uh, as uh, Joseph was submitting. Mm -hmm. I remember the speech made on Saturday in, in Shema district by Professor Kamontu, mm -hmm. who is now a senior presidential advisor, but has served in NRM through the 36 mm -hmm. years. That as there were students at Makere, student leaders, some UPC leaders were arrested when I mean took over mm -hmm. in 1971. And that included the late Macaro that we had gone to send off. Mm -hmm. So Professor Kamun said when they were taken to Makinde, they were beaten. And as student leaders, they wanted to send the mattresses, small mattresses to sleep on because they were sleeping on the floor. Mm -hmm. Nobody could type a letter for them requesting to take or mattresses. Pa uh, oh. mattresses. So they had to type, because everybody said, if they find this in a, the carbon on my typewriter, writer, mm, I'll be finished. Mm. So they had to type the letter in a hidden manner, where you know, some people had to conspire and make sure they are not traced. But when they reached their student leaders, they found the letter Makaru had a mark of one whip on the buttocks. Oh. And they were shocked that what kind of chivoko is mm. Can you give a person mm. that leaves a mark mm. on their buttocks? <laughs> and as you're saying this, mm. Mm. so the mona's mama, the Kakwenza, Kakwenza's back <laughs> is decorated like a crocodile mm. under NRM mm. and the government mm. that community is serving today. Mm. Shame. <laughs> Okay, uh, I, I would like to call oh. for a break right now, a short break, and then when we return, we are going to uh, go into the Kakwenza issue. Of course, <laughs> it's uh, the trending matter right now. Kakwenza is in Malawi, I think, by press time. And uh, how he got there, no one knows. And also, of course, we want to interrogate the, the intervention or the role of the international community in this conversation. Is it relevant? Is it even important? When we return, uh, we shall be getting back to that conversation. Uh, right away. Violence. <laughs> Anger and hatred. <laughs> Misery. Loss and pain. 
No, this shouldn't be the situation after elections. Fellow youth and Ugandans, now that elections are over, it is time to embrace our differences in opinion, political affiliations, and other issues that tend to divide us. We need to refocus on all the things that are beneficial to us, our families and friends. It's our duty to restore peace in our communities, and even as we participate in democratic processes, it's important important that we do it with dignity. Say no to post-election violence. This message is brought to you by Center for Constitutional Governance in partnership with Action Aid Uganda. The Citizens Chatroom happens every Friday at 2 p.m. on Civic Space TV online on Facebook and YouTube. We invite you to be part of this conversation. Civic Space TV, freedom always. Welcome back. Uh, to the chat citizens chat uh, show program that uh, we are holding right here on Civic Space TV. I would like to welcome you and thank you for watching us and uh, participating in this discussion this far. Before we went for the break, we had just an interest, interesting conversation here. And uh, of course, we have reached the point of Kakwenza flight. He has called it the Rukida Chwezi, uh, <laughs> probably it's the Rukira Chwezi flight now. Uh, the young man has had to disappear mysteriously. And of course, uh, it's an important conversation because a lot of um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, human rights activists, defenders now, it seems it is the trend now, uh, to get out. Is, is this a, a good uh, picture for our country? in terms of our international placing and all that. I want to pick your thoughts. Maybe, Joe, you have not got sufficient time. What is your thought on this issue? Is the international community relevant in this conversation? And uh, I think we, we, we saw from the government spokesperson somewhere uh, today, I think the German government did something and they are quite uncomfortable with uh, this conversation. Mm. Uh, Kakwenza just passed next door here where <laughs> we least expected and all that. So the, the role of the international community uh, in enforcement of international human rights frameworks is the discussion I'd like us to have uh, around this topic right now. What is your view on that? Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I just want to say that um, I, you gave me the space. Mm. I found that I was rather lost for words, mm. uh, and so it's uh, more of my fault than the space. So, uh, and simply because I think the, the, the whole issue is rather emotive, mm. and then uh, I don't know what to say and what not to say. And indeed, at the beginning of the conversation, when I look at the trajectory of my own lived experience and the trajectory of questions of human rights abuse in this country, starting from independence, allegations and facts, uh, I find it is extraordinary that after 36 years we'd be here. But back to this, in terms of uh, the, 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 the disappearance of Kankwenza, as I said, I tested my own, and I found it absolutely unacceptable that any Ugandan citizen would. But there's something else I want to say, that beyond my own experiences, both as a, a victim of torture and an NRA inside this country, as a young student, and something that forced me to exile, which now Kankwenza has gone to exile, I went on to be a mini human rights activist and expert. Mm. And then I went on to do many of these other things. And then I went on to say, I need to study why ruthless regimes, men and particularly New Zealand men, hold power and use them so ruthlessly against their people. Mm. And so that led me to scholarly work around forced migration and refugees. So it's an area of my own expertise in a way. Last night, I was, the other night actually, I was thinking that uh, my next column in the Monitor should possibly cover this. I decided possibly otherwise. And that was going to look at, at a trajectory of what would have happened to Kangwesa leading to his exile. And, and that is the, the starting of the torture, that we realize that you're captured, arrested, the experiences of the entire process, possibly escape in this case, where uh, the courts instruct uh, your holders, in this case, Mr. Museveni's regime, to release you, take you to, to, to courts and they, they, they disregard it, uh, you somehow managing to get out, thanks in part really to global, global pressure, um, managing to find how you exit, uh, checking how, whether or not you're going to get documentation to exports, things like that, where you'll get money, the kind of friends with whom you're able to work, exiting, and normally exiting, I'm saying this very deliberately, exiting to a third country, in this case, thanks maybe to UPC's generosity with the Rwandese, 
um, that English is now a common language in Rwanda because it was possible Kakwenza could easily have gone to Rwanda and found French and the language that I'm not saying it doesn't know, possibly language, a country which you don't speak the language, you don't know anything. That continues to be part of the torture the young man would have been going through as part of the trajectory of the entirety of these other things. Then you go down there, are you accepted or not? Is relatively lucky, is now fairly high profile uh, uh, global person. Yeah. And then you go into there and then you begin this uncertainness. It's even worse. For me, while I was young and I left my family and my father didn't even know where I was, we thought, you know, um, in this case, you, you don't know where your family is, mm. your young, beautiful wife and your, your children. These are all. Now, I went on to do specific studies on these matters because I was saying, and I'm saying it to Mr. Museveni, that part of my commitment is this, that I hoped our lived experiences was that we create a Uganda in which no other young, average Ugandan citizen would go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. That has actually been my public narrative, both abroad and home. And it's actually shocking, very sad to see here. That said, though, anyway, in terms of the question, the international community is as much part of this as possible because um, global convention, we're referring to the Geneva Convention on these matters. And as I said, something that Museveni said, he was not uh, aware of deliberately. But of course, he does know. Um, you mentioned Germany. You mentioned these usual suspect friends of Mr. Museveni, Anglo-American Germany. These are countries that, from my lived experience as a campaigner for return to multipartism and human rights abuse in Uganda, particularly when NR was busy torturing in the north, um, you found it very interesting that Britain, America, and Germany, those big countries, you know, were experts at justifying Museveni's rape and abuse of human rights in our country. Mm. Even the Mukura massacres, I know a, a foreign minister a, a, who, I think I believe I have a letter, tried to explain that, you know, state securities were trying to, to check these things and then, you know, sometimes excesses, you know. So these governments right now will be responding to a mess they helped feed. But they're important because perhaps their voices are much more loud and much more hard and responded to by Mr. Museveni. So you feel there is going you. to be some help or some opportunity to improve the, the situation? The only hope is that because Museveni serves them, you know, when they speak loudly, when they instruct Museveni, Comrade Witch, uh, Museveni will tend sort of to respond. The only thing is that Museveni is such an expert in manipulating them that in these cases you will simply say that, look, you, you, you get hard on me, and then the Ugandan soldiers that we are using on your behalf in Somalia will bring them up. Because in Uganda, we also have rent and army. Even this business in Congo, we go there, we're going to Congo, you know, we are trying to pacify Congo for you so that you can come and pick gold or uranium in a, on your own terms. So, so treat me nicely. That is the way Museveni likes to exploit, uh, uh, mislead, and in this case, manipulate uh, uh, and blackmail international community. But at the end of the day, it still works. Mm. When Anglo-America says no, in many cases, Mr. Museveni will respond. But the other thing that Mr. Museveni fears very much, and that is why he brought William Pike, a Mzungu guy, to manage New Vision for 20 years, to help as part of propaganda. This guy knows what he's doing, you know? Um, it was nice that the, global, the international community was present him as Mr. Saint Museveni, this is priest Museveni, that even his military compart, in, in, in other words, like a Saint Museveni, you know? So to do it. But he knew that if he gets bad press abroad, then he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. So good enough, these friends of his, when they make noise and the CNNs that uh, the Sarabirators are really, really uh, uh, blackmailed about, you know, when it's convenient, NGOs are trouble, you know, <laughs> this Anglo-American money, they drive these because when in reality, I just need to make this point very quickly, when in reality, those very same people just about give uh, little money to the Sarabirators to make sure the Sarabirators are able to put on table yeah. the realities of the smaller Kankwazis. I am you know. told that you are operatives of the, the, the international media. That is the accusation that you, human rights activists. Oh, yeah. Have. They, 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 I would like a comment from Sarah as well on that issue. No, by all means, yes, they say so, but as a matter of reality, no, the international community is extremely important on this yeah. because they are the, possibly the last kick, and Museveni knows it, and that's why when they come in, 
they try to turn it the other way around, or our sovereignty. So that the ordinary, unsuspecting Ugandans don't see the other thing. Because so you the point have of, been accused mm, for running to mm, the West, you are imperialist and all that, you are promoting this neocolonialism and all that, but, manage your problems locally. But that's the point I, I was like making. To, 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 yes, to, that's the point I was making. To have a, that conversation. Mm. Sarah, just a comment on mm. that, and then I will come to uh, a comrade Awuch here to, to give us a response on uh, that position from government. Human rights are universal. Mm. Some countries have enacted specific laws on an limited ju jurisdiction mm. on some of the human rights violations. Mm. And some of government officials can be arrested anywhere. Anywhere in the where world. Where these jurisdictions exist. So there is no longer nowhere to hide. To hide yeah. Mm. Yeah. Globally, torture was out the road in the 19th century. So for Uganda, where leaders like just thumbing on, you know, transformation, I am the only existing messiah, mm -hmm. you know, kind of approach mm -hmm. to leadership. <laughs> and then we are still at the basics. We can't provide them. <coughs> that even animals cannot practice mm -hmm. in animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is the, let's not, let's stop abusing some of the words. What is transformation about torture? <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. What is transformation about kidnaps? Mm -hmm. A conduct of, of, of terror groups like Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. You have your army that is kidnapping citizens. Mm. And then the transformation, they are just the other day they were celebrating uh, the their assault on Uganda. I mean, really, and like I said, you look from pig to man, man to pig, but you can't back the difference. To the question of the international role community. Of international community. Do we have hope that something is going to change by uh, what is going on? Under the treaty, the treaty on diplomacy, the Geneva Treaty Convention. Mm. The, the, the principles that govern diplomacy and then the UDR and other instruments, international conventions on human rights and other international public law. They are crimes that are committed against the whole world. Mm, 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 mm. And abuse of human rights is one of them. Mm, mm. So you, if you get your citizens and you are kidnapping them and you are abusing them under international law, right. you are cr well, committing well. crimes against everybody. Mm. Mm and the universality of human rights. Yeah. So and everybody should act to protect global citizens. Mm, mm. That's the role that fortunately the international community plays. President Museven, when he waged war against the government, his family was given refuge in Sweden. Mm. Most, Safely. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And he even has a farm mm. in Sweden. Mm, mm. Yes. And the... Uh, when he was there in 2004, he promised Parliament that he's retiring to occupy his farm in Sweden. Mm. And they were looking forward. <laughs> until today. <laughs> until today. Mm. So, but that's different. So, <laughs> international community has helped. And under even international refugee mm. laws, mm. anybody running from trouble mm. must get shelter. Mm. Yeah. And it's the same premise that Uganda is using the same refugee principle, although for propaganda value, mm. yeah, and money. that anybody mm. who needs safety must get safety. In Uganda. Yeah, no, you, you, yes, yes, Uganda is the third. Yeah. Mm. Highest mm. Host, refugee mm. host. Oh, yeah. So even Ugandans who need safety, must get it at least in that's return correct. for the refugees we are hosting mm. as, as a country mm. 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 and the principle that we believe in. But, but do you me... feel comfortable or satisfied with the intervention of the international community this far in the affairs of Uganda in terms of this particular offense? There are issues that must be done by citizens. Mm. But when it comes to international agreed principles, practices, protocols, the international community must act mm, mm. In, in that respect. Have they failed to act before? There are instances where we feel they are not doing much mm. in that respect. Mm. 
especially but they've been hoodwinked by the propaganda of NRM for quite a long while mm. as a stabilizer of the Great Lakes region and all these other colleagues that they bestow on themselves. Mm. But when in true sense, you see you have a closed border for three years with your neighbor, mm -hmm. then you declare it a family matter and send family members. <laughs> then you Not have... A a, I anymore. saw recent <laughs> arguments by South Sudan yes, about that we are harboring. destabilizing. Yeah. Ah. I, I, yeah. A young country yeah. that is yeah. trying to stabilize itself, where well, we are a garant of mm. a peace mm. agreement. Mm. Very unfortunate. Yes. Mm. So what stability is that? When we have all our neighbors yeah. angry with us and with the reasonable grounds against us. So the international community, especially Europe and America, have been believing in this concept of hey, how shall we manage the Great Lakes region mm. when mm. seven goes. goes. But I'm glad now they are realizing the true colors. Finally, the mask is off. But seven is the center of the... <laughs> The instability is changing. Well, I'm glad we have. But that. no, to conclude, oh, yes. just yesterday, the International Court of Justice mm, mm, yeah. delivered their final wow. decision mm. on Uganda's mm. Pranda case against mm. the DRC. Good enough for Ugandans, because this yeah. is not for government. Mm. Yeah. Our reparations charge reduced from uh, up to. 325 mm -hmm. million dollars, mm -hmm. very big reduction. The two thirds of ah. So we are coming down from 10 trillion to 1.14. Yeah, 10 billion dollars to the 325 million. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, this money will be paid by innocent taxpayers, including never, our children mm -hmm. and grandchildren. Also, the issues we are accused of are very ashamed. Mm. Rape yep. of women, <laughs> we for rape. sexual violence. Yes. So we are paying for, for sex tourism of UPDF <laughs> in the DRC. <laughs> very bad, ashamed, bad. saddening <laughs> at the time when UPDF is in the spotlight for violating people's so rights. So does that show that yeah. when they go there, instead of <laughs> keeping peace... Forceful sex tourism. <laughs> because actual sex tourism they will be, should be willing partners. Yeah. It shows that that's, yeah. that's what took them there. We'll, we'll come back to that as we wind up. <laughs> uh, I would like to hear from uh, Afanda which in terms of our sector as human rights defenders. Should Ugandans <laughs> call Uganda home? Should we continue to know or even appreciate that they are safeguards, that we should not be talking about these issues and end up in other countries. But also, mm. your government has been put in bad light in the international community this far because of what has been going on. I don't know what your comment is. You can also make any other additional comment. That, okay, thank yeah. you so much, Honorable. Um, it's good that we are conversing, but I hope you now notice that uh, that chair is hot. It is. <laughs> and my, very, very hot, the way actually. I'm seeing the hotness yes. is, is actually how you manage us. Mm. Because this, we are always in scarcity of time. Mm. And I can see you at pain at how much time is a witch taking, how much time is a congressman taking. Mm. So maybe we would help you mm. by trying always to answer your question and be and of brief, course you want yes. a discussion as much as mm. I see that is the hottest part you're feeling. It is. But if you ask a question, how much, how much are time is a witch going to take? <laughs> <laughs> but now I am addressing the issue of international community and the safety. Mm. Now, uh, <laughs> Uganda lives in a civilized world. The whole world uh, under the United Nations, there are 193 countries. Mm. And they are all bound by some, some minimum, instruments. Mm. minimum yeah. methods of mm. operation. Mm. So it is no longer like in the past where you have automatic sovereignty. Like you're in your own home, mm. should you decide to kill your third-born child, it is your compound. Uh, should you if you have three wives, should you decide to kill the middle or the third wife? <laughs> it is your, that is not now how the world operates. Mm. The world is a single village. The 193 countries of UN, they are all together. So sovereignty vis-a-vis -vis the universality. So you must do a right thing as acceptable by international community. Now, uh, in this kind of challenges, we can be taken on by in two aspects. Either bilateral, bilateral in this case, a relationship between us and German, where we exchange ambassadors, 
German will tell you, excuse me, if you want to be my friend, there are minimum grounds that you must not go below. Mm. That is at a, a bilateral relationship. So the effect could be that if, for example, our bilateral friends find that they are not happy with it, mm. then they would take appropriate actions. And these appropriate actions may be our bilateral relations. We have always had things like funding this road from here to there, and the German government is taking They will always tell us, you know what, uh, we are going to do this, we are supposed to do this, but unfortunately, our condition says that this, 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 and we have, we have evidence to this extent. So that is the extent to which our bilateral relations can be affected. Mm. But on the multilateral aspects, oh, we have oh, issues like Security Council. There are procedures of admissibility of issues that come there. So if it goes to Security Council, of course, it will decide on what they do. Uh, even there are relevant courts. Like uh, you remember when people t attempted to go to court because of Kasese, mm. that is now would be handling it at a multilateral level. Mm. So we have the effect at the international community has effect on us on bilateral relations between mm. us and a particular country, Uganda, USA, Uganda, German, Uganda, France, Uganda, what? But also at uh, multilateral uh, institutions where a community of states live. But I like to say that uh, these states. Even at bilateral level, they want to listen to what the government is saying. So I believe the foreign ministry and other ministries will always explain what happens. Uh, and that's why there's a need for a clear bilateral relationship. So I believe that the, the, the bilateral embassies will always ask the government of Uganda. There's what, what is called a diplomatic note. They will always write a diplomatic note to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and say, hey, you're What's my friend, happening? can we understand this? Mm. Yeah. And it will depend on how they judge it. Mm. Uh, of course, in Security Council, there are procedures of admissibility. Is this admissible? Even in the court, in the ICC, is this admissible or not? So, but all said and done is that uh, states are always, first and foremost, assessed in measures taken in place. For example, if they accuse Uganda of recruiting children into the army, they want to go, for example, you have recruited to Musima of 14 years or Kelo of 13 years, they will always examine to say, what are the laws, for example, which define a child? Who is a child in your country? Mm. What is the, the age of recruitment <coughs> as stipulated by the law? Mm. What are the recruitment procedures? Do you call, do you get letters from parents, from elders? Do you do it in public, in a stadium, like in a cable stadium, if you're in Lira? Do you let UNICEF oversee that? So states at international level, they assess on measures in place. Even under periodic review that we are saying, we assess on that. So the international community will have to assess us on measures. Of course, in the individual act like a Kakwenze, whatever, Mashereka, and all this will always come up. But first and foremost, International communities assess us in as far as measures put in place. Which in this case, two reports have indicated we are doing very, very badly. Which report and which in one? In terms of the human rights observance. Which one and which one? The previous one and the current one. Report by who? To who? Human rights, the status of human rights in Uganda. By who? Under the Human UPR. Rights Watch or something. And recently Commission. UPR as well. Actually, that one is probably mm. the most mm. recent. I, I don't know what you mean. So in by terms of the report. measures of enforcement, uh, we are not doing very, very well. I don't know any report that you're talking about. How it works is that Uganda makes a report for UPR. Mm. Then the UPR, UPR Universal Periodic Peer Review. Peer Review. Periodic Review. Periodic Review. Yes. That does take place in Geneva. <coughs> when it takes place in Geneva, why it is done by peers? Peers mean your equals. States are picked up members of that process. So you will find the state of Pakistan asking if they are a member. UK asking. Now, it is not true that they make report. It is us who make report. What comes out there as a product is what is called uh, conclu concluding observations. observations yes. So it is the concluding observations that come from there rather than a report from there. So when this yes, report but go, maybe as a little addition, mm -hmm. even a non-state actors and citizens of other countries can make reports can make or any agencies. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah, that always takes place mm -hmm. 
if it is treaty body system yeah. or even the other one there's always a procedure called uh precession precession mainly because the members are not competent enough to understand what is in a state party so during precession civil society actors uh, that you are talking about make what is called shadow report mm -hmm. or alternative report mm -hmm. so it is that alternative report the shadow report that makes them understand and interrogate uganda as it comes but i want to put it that rather than saying two reports are implicating <coughs> uganda mm. that you are rather say that the concluding observations made a, it says this and it would be wise for us to quote because they are numbered in power. That's it would be semantic that. Safari. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what are the concluding observations saying? Yeah. Do you have them? Can yes. you quote them? Yes. What does it say? I mean, it has indicted Uganda. It's as general as that? Yes. 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 No, I know the drafting of, of well, concluding observations. Yes. There are several recommendations on yeah. civil yeah. political like, like, rights, example, on women is, rights, on youth, actually, is one freedom of, of assembly. Mm. Yes, and one of which are they yes. say Uganda should ratify mm -hmm. yes. the, the, the optional, the optional protocol, protocol, to, to, protocol. To, you know, the, uh, access to detention yes. and yes. Mm -hmm. things like this. You, so you, we yes. hope that maybe next year, uh -huh. as they go back to report, you see that now illustrates mm. illustrate the point I'm saying. Mm. International communities assesses you by measures put in place yeah, rather than in individual action. Mm. So now they're asking, put in place this. the optional protocol. Yes. But I also like to say that some of the international instruments that come up, some states have put it as their best practice already in place, uh, although you need to uh, officially adopt, uh, uh, take the uh, protocol. For example, Human Rights Commission and My question I used to visit. Is that Excuse me. Also Human Rights Commission used to visit pre uh, uh, detention centers. Yeah. It is on record. So even without mm. official and adoption. They were denied okay, access even to with, So you have practices by states. Mm. In fact, the international law says if you have better standards, mm. You go it. ahead. So you find some standards, some states even have better standards than what is being proposed. I'm asking a subjective question mm. because beyond those international, you know, reporting mechanisms, mm. some individual countries like America has gone ahead to indict or rather issue sanctions, sanctions against individual yeah, uh, what agents I'm of saying, the state. I, what implications so, is that? Yeah, that's what country? I said earlier, that the repercussion is at multilateral mm. and bilateral. So when a country like United States comes up with their measures, Sanctions. that is mm. a bilateral effect. So in other words, United Nations, United States is saying we are not going through UN, mm. we are not going through Security mm. Council, mm -hmm. we are not going through peer, peer, periodic re report, we are not going through a treaty body system. They could choose to go through a we are doing bilateral. So the effect is uh, that, well, academically or theoretically, what it means. The, the, the sanction on a person, like if you like General X is sanctioned, it has effect on the person, mm. a drastic effect. For example, a, a, a sanction works in a way that it blocks the whole system around you. Mm. The, the whole system, you know, some of us may not know that it is quite effective. Does it affect the individual only it or the system entirely? Because it we say the individual, that is why they identify mm. the individual. Reappointed actually by the same state. By it, it, implication, it, it, it would think the that the individual. It only affects the country in as far as the image. Mm. Of course, even in your home, mm. even if a child is it's punished, it's but it already affects the image of the family. Mm. If a child is punished in your family, it affects the image. So in summary, I like to say that the, the, the issue of torture can dent our image mm -hmm. among fr between us and our friends mm -hmm. and un can also dent our image among us and the community. So what we have to do as a country now is to explain our position. Like I'd always said, is it a deliberate policy by <coughs> state? No. Are there measures we are put in place? No. So that our friends at bilateral level are able to understand. Our friends at multilateral level are unable to understand. So that when they take their measures, they take it in the full knowledge of mm. what the state has explained to them. Mm. And we have machineries mm. through diplomatic notes and all that. Can I, can Michael, I just ask something uh, very personal? Yeah, I would like Michael to come in. Then we can come uh, have just a round of comments and then we can make some few uh, concluding remarks in terms of recommendations here and there. But uh, I feel like there's a question we left out uh, in terms of understanding the type of society we are dealing with because this torture seems to be on the rise. 
seems to be on the rise. We see a lot of incidents everywhere, not just in the public, uh, on, uh, by the state agents, but also in our individual communities and homes and all that. Yeah. Might there be some underlying uh, things that we have not interrogated as a community, as a, you know, as a country, in terms of the causes of these uh, spiral, you know, okay. uh, high-rocketing causes of, yes. Yeah, you, you know they violence. say that um, the young birds learn from, from their mother and the, and the older birds to fly. Mm. So if everything someone sees every day is that it is, to, you know, it's torture and what, what kind of society are we going to bring? So the money that whatever Variomos is asking for, <laughs> to change mindsets. Mm -hmm. So if we give him the 200 billion, <laughs> what is the breakdown? Yes. Is he going to force people and tell them, by the way, they don't beat people when they are watching it on TV? Mm. I think we need to be a serious country. Mm. But I, uh, before I indulge into that, let me just make one comment on the international community. How come you say that you can't lecture us on democracy, but we can take your money, mm. give us your money? The U.S. has threatened saying they are going to pull out of the health system. If the U.S. has been supporting the health system, and it is almost looking like it's not there. Mm. What will happen when they pull out? <laughs> mm, 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 okay. Mm. So let us, you know, this pretense, like uh, Major said, we are in a global village. Mm, mm. That when I go to Kenya, I am respected. Just as Kenyans are respected Respecting here. Respecting my, yeah. So that's what it is about international human rights. Mm -hmm. So you cannot hide under the principle of sovereignty to violate rights that are universally acceptable. applied and mm. acceptable. Mm. So, so I think for me it is pretense, and as government we need to be very serious on that and as citizens. The other point is about, there's a lot of, of torture happening. Mm. Now, it is always in levels of this, again, it is on that point of superiority. Um, I know of a case where an investor, <laughs> a boy lost a wheelbarrow on the site, just wheelbarrow, and he was electrocuted in his private parts. Oh. Spent one week he can't even, you know, he can't even uh, uh, make a short call mm. for a week. <laughs> but he lost a wheelbarrow. Now, what if he lost a whole building? Or if the whole building came down? And this is an investor, and this is torture. And then the uh, police at uh, Chira Road is bribed and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So there's, there, there, there's torture, there's a lot of... There's a lot of struggle within the society. A lot of anger. There's a lot of At anger. what point did we reach here, <coughs> really? I want to ask, what happened in the national dialogue? What, uh -huh. And you see, for me, the national dialogue may be just an event. But can we as Ugandans find the time and say, you know what, we need to forgive each other? Mm -hmm. That cannot happen if people who are supposed to be accountable are accountable. To come and say, guys, forgive us. This won't happen. I read that the, the Chileka SU, the, 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 what is Special that? Investigations that Unit. The, the IGP has closed Something. It. So mm. I don't know whether it's just a headline or that it in, in, in fact it is closed. But How can we see, verify? Chileka has yeah. two sides. Yes. Mm. The, side, the, the detention yes. side of, uh, of CMI uh, mm. and, the, and the detention side of police. It is oh. the one of the police. So police so the has closed their, their side. Closed their side. Now he has it, left it for, for the CMI the and the... Yes. So uh, I think we need to see <laughs> tangible results. Actions. On yeah. Monday, let mm. them, since they love Uganda and since mm. they love them, let mm. them parade all the guys that have been involved in the torture mm. and say, how come they were, they were so quick, they were so quick to parade <coughs> suspects before camera, and they are not quick to parade the people who are torturing the Ugandans. Torturers. Mm. Yes, mm. so let them do that. So a country needs healing. We are tired. And actually I was saying, when are we getting holidays as Ugandans? Every day it is it's a, a big problem. It's a full time job being a Ugandan. Has Musem never had a holiday? Has Musem never had a holiday since he came to being a Ugandan. We need to. Has when are holiday? we getting holiday? Where you wake up, there's medicine in the hospital, the potholes have been fixed. I, I want to say this. I said it last time on the other show. We still don't have lights mm. on, a, an, on Northern Bypass. Mm. We still don't have lights on the, the world's uh, most expensive road. Entebbe Express Entebbe Highway. Express. Mm. We collect over 200 million in two days. Mm. Why can't they put lights? Mm -hmm. And then there's in, in, increased security. So those are small things that annoy us. We mm. are an annoyed country. We mm. are tired of getting annoyed. We don't even know what to do. We need the holidays, Ugandans. Yeah. <laughs> but where, which way forward, <laughs> Joe? We are an angry nation, we are frustrated here and there. Bad I know, and especially the young generation. UPC gave, Where do we go? UPC committed mm. this country to God uh, and uh, committed everything that would do it for God and our country, our country. 
But uh, what NRA did was to turn this thing into a personal thing. Mm. The, the chief executive of this country has not been on holiday since he came to power 36 years ago. I think really Ugandans don't need to go on any holidays holiday because we go on holidays anyway. Mm. Uh, it's Mr. Museveni and his system that is basically mm. genuine. They need a holiday. They need a holiday. <laughs> Mr. Museveni needs a holiday. NRA, NRM needs a holiday. Revolutionary. I can tell you when they take a holiday, this country will change. But on a slightly serious note, as we conclude, I think, too, really, you know, these guys came from the bush. They came out of violence. I think I was giving my submissions to my channel. Sometimes mm. I use myself as an example, very deliberately. I was using my submission to simply say that we came out of violence. Mm. It's actually possible for us to turn around it. Mm. I told Mr. Museveni that I went to study. I went to study academia to try and get very independent professor observers to, 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 to de de link the thing me in case my thoughts is very much Japna Gongra thing, UPC. What is it that I'm not seeing? So Mr. Museven needs to, he has so many advisors paid for, we just pay them for, for pay them, you know, pay, pay him for, for pay, pay these advisors for him. Um, he could also possibly... But does he pay them to advise him? <laughs> yes, yeah, apparently. Maybe some, some, some religious leaders or some of his friends that he works for in, in Congo, you know, they, 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 could, they could advise him. No, I think we need a national talks. And then the question of the national dialogue is actually very genuine. Uh, my, on my return from exile within the first one month, I, um, I called a press conference in which I asked for national truth and reconciliation uh, in this country. I also asked for investigations of crimes committed against Uganda, starting with the Luero mm. uh, and, and, and after under independence. We could do that, you know, yeah. and to do so in such a manner that we don't want to, we're not necessarily going to hang some people. I know many people in the NRA would hang, mm -hmm. but basically to simply say that that is a beginning yeah. of a healing of process, healing. you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, that we're able to give hope to the generation younger, Coming up younger to than us. myself so that we're able mm -hmm. to look for It's absolutely possible. Um, uh, Monica, in the last one week, I have met many, many young people, some of whom may be watching this program, many, many young people. Do you know, Sarah, it's extraordinary. Um, that young citizens in this country really don't know much, but young people in this country are extremely open-minded, mm. and young people in this country are genuinely tired. Young people in this country are asking how many, so many questions. Is there a possibility of a country beyond your channel, mm. you know, and a possibility of a nation that they're able to, to, to churn and chart? And thankfully, this program, uh, led by you, is, is, is trying to work to give them those hope and possibilities. No, we need to heal. But the reason is, because we came and that it came out of violence, crude violence away from elections. They're sort of linked into that. Um, and since then, you see the tortures that took place in northern Uganda, you see the tortures that took place in eastern Uganda, you see the tortures in Kasez, you see the tortures in Kakwenza. You know, violence, you know, it, it yes. just it does. Better. So the point is, we are, for that reason, an angry country. One of the, the biggest failures of NRA, as I said, is to fail to heal and bring our people together. Um, but that is possible. Mandela said it is possible. As we teach people to mm. hit, we can teach people to So love. we need like a BBI here We as well. need a bit of yeah. that. <laughs> and I'm so is that yeah. what Mariamons wants to No, he wants to change our minds that we love our country. We can't love people <laughs> no, who are beating no, us. You, you, but yeah. you, you can't teach that. You, you know, can't you can just that. create yeah. a level environment for that. So we need leadership for that. And the leader for that is actually not Mr. Museveni. Mm. You know, and unfortunately. You have to be a new top person. So, so, yeah. so sort of that. And somebody who's able to leave that yeah. process. Mm. Yeah. Genuinely, it is possible. Um, but, you know, why angry? If all this all we see you know, there's no reason why, you know, uh, uh, we, we are surprised that everybody else is very much about me, myself, and I. And if you're joking, I'm going to throw this into mm. your direction. But there is an alternative way. And the alternative way, very quickly, is this, that I'm, I'm the youngest, oldest on this one. You know, I experienced safe, decent environment in this country as a young citizen of this country. And I can tell you, it's extremely exciting to be able to live in diversity where you don't care about whose name the other is, but they basically generally the peaceful coexistence mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. It is possible it happened before Museveni came to power. Before Museveni came to power, there's diversity and the possibility in this country. It is to possible have, beyond him. It is possible to have diversity, and that is what uh, Joe is concluding on uh, with. Uh, a fun day. This is a civic space engagement, and this week government is on the spot. So we shall not uh, allow the government to make concluding remarks last. That's what I'm me, inviting the, you the, to. The, my recommendation, uh, few one, because the investigating officers investigate to take this information or evidence to court, court. they should be trained. 
mm-hmm. on how to investigate. That does not need violence. Mm. We should give them more equipment for investigation. Mm-hmm. Mm. We have talked of cameras. Mm. We are now talking of fitting things in the, the cars mm. and the, uh, the border borders. The logistics. We should give them important. the logistics. Mm. Yeah. And then we should emphasize on complaint mechanisms for mm-hmm. violations. Mm-hmm. So to me, those are three recommendations. Training for the investigating officers, uh, equipments necessary to pick rightful information for investigation, because all these are for court, even if you're charged of treason or murder. And then complaint mechanism, a very thorough complaint mechanism for victims of torture, mm. and the state should Maybe you should have also added in your, the earlier way you started, it would be appropriate for this particular program because you were very, very apologetic in, in a sense, I guess. That would be appropriate as well. To say you know, sorry, Kakwenza and the team, and the rest, really. I think it's human. It's you see, human. You see, the, 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 that approach uh, uh, led it's Jim... Not for revolutionaries. Uh, brought Jim <laughs> with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, approach, that approach brought Jim and Justice Ogola in problem. Mm. Ogola, when during the investigation, told Jim, was before the committee concluded its mm. work, that General Jim, be man enough, stand, face that camera, and tell Ugandans that you are sorry. Jim said, my lord, you are in the middle of investigation. You haven't come with your conclusion. Yeah. Who are you to tell me to apologize for which, which crime without the end of confusion? Mm. You are challenging my manhood. Jim lost his head and told him <laughs> the time they wanted men to fight, you were hiding. But, uh, <laughs> That's why Jim was quoted out of context. Mm. But it was a real provocation from Ogola, mm. ordering mm. Jim look at the camera in the middle, middle of investigation. So, what I'm saying is, so me, what I'm saying is, apology. In choice of what in diction it's a, would it's mean mm. it, it would mean by a real choice of word yeah. means that I have agreed on this particular wrong, mm. I have agreed to this, I hold liability, and I'm sorry. No, the the minimum cutoff point is that we have had media reports, and we are saying even at that it is bad enough. Mm. Mm. Even at that it is bad enough. So taking it from that premise. It doesn't warrant an apology from me mm. at this time. Mm. But what I'm saying, taken from that, torture is bad. Mm. And it should not be partitioned, it should be condemned. Mm. But it's different from apology. It is different from apology. It's just a humane way to, you know, you know to say that we all fall as humans. And uh, anyone can be in Kakwenza's shoes or any other <coughs> person. The so, revolutionaries are not falling. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, time is uh, here They're waiting to tell. For court to pronounce. I would like us to conclude, Sarah, uh, in terms of your last comments and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, recommendations. I will, I will conclude mm. first by, you know, I was looking at the, the recommendations by Afanda Wichi. Hmm. And then I, uh, what was running in my mind was, okay, so what recommendation? out of the three that you've given, would have helped in Kakwenza, mm. Kakwenza, Kakwenza case. case. Mm. Kakwenza allegedly sent a tweet that annoyed some people. What gadgets did they need to investigate the tweets? Mm-hmm. Did they need the cameras? Mm. Did they need what fittings? Mm. And what mm. did they do to his torture? Mm. Mm. And are they, are they importing I, I the did machine? send a tweet well, that I maybe... Said that incidents open our eyes for a general solution. Mm. Mm. So you're One incident, you're talking of the general, yes. That's why I'm saying we always assess by measures put in place. Mm. So an incident may be an incident, but it opens our eyes Today. for a holistic for solution. Holistic not only this case. The holistic okay. solution, mm. in my view, is taking action. Mm. Mm. Taking a firm hand. Mm. That was a third recommendation. Mm. Torturers. Mm. Mm. This person is tortured Trace the line of the chain of command. Of command. Mm. Who Not has access to this person? Mm. Can you parade yourselves there? Mm-hmm. If you want to put, uh, either mean you put people on a firing squad, except you put people, wrong people. If you want yes. to put oh. torturers, rain them up. <laughs> Show them the public. Mm. <laughs> then you can punish them. You don't have to use firing squad. Mm. But let uh, them the match. Mm-hmm. To the public to see. That's correct. Mm. Mm. Better their family, see them. Yeah. And say, hey, my husband is a torturer. Mm. My son is a torturer. Mm. My boyfriend is a torturer. Mm. My grandchild is a torturer. Because mm. these are young people. Mm. 
Let's show them the public. Let's take yeah. action. Yeah. Let's remove uniform yeah. Yeah. because they are not fit to wear uniform of a taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this rests with the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. President, mm -hmm. we know you are not practically involved, but you are vicariously implicated mm -hmm. in the conduct of your security forces. Mm -hmm. You can only distance yourself mm -hmm. by taking action against them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen in this space today, I want to thank you so much uh, for your time, for being here, and also being able to inform, engage, discuss very difficult issues, I can yeah. say. This is an emotive topic, but also very critical to every person because this can happen to Kakwenza, but any of us <coughs> uh, can be a culprit anytime. So I want to appreciate you on behalf of Civic Space TV and CCG and other partners in this course for coming here, particularly our friend, uh, Afande um, uh, Awich, who is always available to dissect these very difficult matters uh, that touch everyone. Uh, we want to sign out and to thank you, our viewer, for being here today. Until we see you next time, let's continue the conversation on our Twitter handles and our other civic spaces that we have, because this is a topic that touches each one of us. We need to end torture in Uganda, and this is the space in which we can engage. Thank you so much. We sign up from here. Shalom. Shalom.